Hi everybody, my name is Nanika Edwards and I'm continuing with my marriage series today, episode 16. And I'll be looking at those little foxes. <laughs> um, in the Song of Solomon, this is what King Solomon, the wisest man ever, had to say. When I say the wisest man ever, I mean after Jesus, that is. Jesus was the wisest man ever far and beyond anybody else, but after him, it'd be Solomon. So, in Song of Solomon 2.15, NKJV, New King James Version, this is what Solomon had to say. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoiled the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. I'll read that again. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Foxes refer to those little pesky things that you need to guard against as a couple. So, for example, um, in a marriage, thoughtfulness and appreciation may seem like little things, but they can help guard against those little foxes. So, Never stop courting your spouse. Buy her that sweet bouquet. Wear his favorite dress and perfume. Tell her she's still the one. Tell him he still sweeps you off your feet. Make her laugh. Make him feel like a stud, etc. Also, never compete with your spouse. This is this is, I think, beyond maybe thoughtfulness and appreciation now. But thoughtfulness and appreciation, or the lack thereof, is those are those are two little foxes to guard against. You know, lack of thoughtfulness and lack of appreciation. But another little fox to guard against would be competing with your spouse. Never compete with your spouse. Men, especially, you do not have to outdo your woman to be a real man. You do not, let me say that again, men, especially, you do not have to outdo your woman to be a real man. A lot of men think that intrinsically a man is supposed to be smarter and superior to his wife in every regard. That's stupid. I, I, I'm sorry for being so blunt, but that's stupid. Men and women are meant to be compatible. And yes, the man is called to be the head of the home, and so on, but not to lord it over his wife, not so that he can parade his superiority and his dominance. That's that's not what it's about. Men and women were built to be compatible. And um, oftentimes when a man thinks that his, his wife is outdoing him, whether it's in terms of how much money she earns or how smart she is in some area of her life um, or, you know, whether she's successful in terms of winning awards and things like that, a lot of men may feel threatened. But, but men, you don't need to be feel threatened and you don't need to compete with your wife. Being better than a woman is not what makes you a man. You know, and you may say, who are you to tell me what a man is if you're a woman? Well, if you think I can't tell you what a man is supposed to be because I'm a woman, um, that too is silly because I can promise you a lot of women know exactly what a man is supposed to be like and that's the kind of man they're looking to marry. <laughs> so you can't tell me that I can't tell you what a man is supposed to be. Um, but anyway, what a real man is supposed to be. But anyway, a man who feels that he needs to compete with women is a very insecure man. That's not a real man. A real man is not insecure. I think uh, absolute killer of any relationship would be competition, toxic competition, toxic competition. You and your wife are a team and on the same side. Have you ever seen a team that competes against itself in the arena? Never. It won't stand a chance. Seriously, you ever seen a basketball competing against itself? Or um, or maybe I should say a, 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 a tennis pair competing against themselves 
in a tennis tournament where they're competing against another um doubles team. You you won't see that. I I will I remember once um <laughs> Mm, I was thinking of this the other day, actually. I remember once being taking part in a tennis tournament when I was a teenager. And now, when I when <laughs> back then, when I used to play tennis, I was a very good tennis player, right? But not in competitions. I wasn't psychologically comfortable when I was at, in an actual tournament. I used to. I used to freeze up and clam up and get really stiff. And so I didn't play the same way in an actual tournament that I would in, um, that I would have like just knocking up and, you know, just playing informally. And so, and yes, I was a competitive person, but for some reason, when it came to tennis, I tended to clam up. I remember once I, 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 um, was playing, a doubles match with a friend of mine and oh it was it was a disaster because I clammed up and of course that person was used to me playing really well when we were knocking up so I guess she you know she wasn't accustomed to me clamming up and so let me tell you it was a disaster because there was just friction between us for the whole for the whole match and of course we lost right we lost so again, I would say, have you ever seen a team that competes against itself in the arena? And in a sense, we weren't competing against each other, but there was a friction. There was, there was opposition. There was, you know, we weren't working together as a team, right? So where there is competition, where two people are constantly butting heads and competing with each other, you know, you're like a team competing against itself in the arena. You can't, st you won't stand a chance. Yeah, you won't stand a chance. So bottom line, keep courting, stop competing, get rid of the foxes, and definitely don't let any vixens in on your scene. So that's it. Feel free to leave comments. Thank you for liking the video if you enjoyed it. And I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Until next time.